and a variety of information and content for you to take in over the next couple hours and really over the next few weeks. Uh, so we hope this is very much the start of an exploration, uh, a frame and a portal to further exploration. Um, but we also hope that you get a lot of material and a lot of insight out of this in particular. Uh, you will see in the chat um, a few different wayfinding tips, some different links to the different Zoom sessions. Uh, we do have a, a welcome from our chair, Mariana Banez, that will kick us off, uh, followed by different breakout rooms for our different program presentations. Uh, and then we'll reconvene after that for uh, a wonderful panel of AUD alums uh, who will discuss their pathways from AUD graduation to where they are now. Uh, and we also have a really wonderful portfolio workshop with Benjamin Franger at the very end of this event. Uh, so we do hope that you find various bits and pieces throughout that help you figure out or think about your next steps. Uh, and of course, we hope that that brings you to us here in Los Angeles. Um, I think that's all I'm going to say for now. Please do use the chat if uh, questions come up that you'd like to flag there. We'll do our best to bring those to the surface. Uh, but without further ado, I'd love to introduce Mary Ibanez, who is the chair of UCLA AUD. Thank you, Travis, for the introduction uh, and welcome everybody. I am keeping an eye on the attendees list and I see that the, um, there are many people that are starting to trickle in into the session. Um, I'm going to start the presentation in a minute. In the meantime, I will say that the people that you see in this uh, grid is a combination of faculty and staff and I'm slowly seeing some alumni uh, beginning to join. So throughout the day, uh, you'll get a chance to meet many of the faces that you see right now, depending on which session uh, you will be attending. I'm going to share my screen now. <clears throat> I need a thumbs up. Do you see my screen? Yep. Yeah. All right. Um, as Travis mentioned, my name is Mariana Ibanez, and I am a professor and the chair of the Architecture and Urban Design Department here at AUD. Um, we prepared a full uh, schedule for you to be able to learn more about the school, about our programs, about the university, and of course, all about the admissions process. Um, it is great to see this group of people um, uh, all together in the screen, both on our side and on the side of the attendees. <clears throat> Just, I'm gonna check only on this slide to make sure my presentation is working. Do you see the schedule on the screen right now? Yeah, perfect. So this is what the afternoon looks like today or afternoon in Los Angeles. Um, after my welcome and the introduction, we are going to break into three separate Zoom sessions for each of the program presentations. Today's open house includes sessions for the Masters of Architecture, the MR1 program, the Master of Science in Architecture and Urban Design, which is our post-professional MSAUD program, which you might also know as the IDEAS program. And the third session is for the MA and PhD programs. Uh, both in your event right and here uh, later in the chat of this uh, webinar, you will find instructions on where to go for each of the sessions. And if you're not sure where to click, just sort of stay here and we can help you, uh, help guide you as we uh, transition. After the program overviews, I know Travis walked us through the um, uh, schedule for the day, but here you can see it graphically. Uh, we're gonna have a short break, then a session on career paths where you will have a chance to meet AUD alumni some that are currently professors here at AUD and others that um, are coming back today to share with you what they have been up to after they graduated from UCLA. During the fourth session, our student affair officers will talk about the admissions process, financial aid and scholarship opportunities. Uh, next, you will have a chance to meet some of our currently enrolled students and hear about some of the work they're involved with uh, extracurricularly, but here uh, within AUD. And finally, we're hosting a portfolio workshop uh, taught by Ben Franger to support all of you um, as you get your work ready for admissions. Uh, while not happening today, I wanted to share that on Monday, November the 6th, we are hosting a day of open studios. It's our in-person open house component for the fall. Uh, for those of you that are here in Los Angeles, or if you can make it to the city, please come 
and join us as we kick off um, the first day of midterm reviews. Uh, we will have a second year course studio and several of our advanced topic studios and research studios uh, presenting. So please come so you can meet students, faculty, staff, and get a first-hand experience of a day in the life at AUD. Um, if you are planning on coming, there is an Eventbrite registration link in our website that you can use to RSVP for the day or reach out via email and we'll help you with that as well. Um, I hope we get a chance to meet many of you in person in the coming days. Um, any presentation about AUD has to begin with Los Angeles. LA really plays a key role in the culture of the university, in the culture of the school and in the culture of our own department. It's our school's backyard and it happens to be one of the most important design laboratories in the world and a massive center for speculative and experimental design, both in architecture and urban design and in allied disciplines. Um, as a global hub for innovation at AUD, we greatly benefit and also contribute to the creative energy around us. That includes, of course, the arts industry, but also an entrepreneurial force that can only be found in California. Um, just a little bit about the city. Today, LA has a population of over 18 million people distributed in a 60 mile radius where more than 150 languages are spoken. That diversity is also reflected in our campus. Um, undoubtedly, Los Angeles and its scope of influence are key players in the global stage. And our city, like many others, while it has that incredible creative energy, is also dealing with really pressing issues um, related to growth, mobility, density, social justice, um, housing, infrastructural obsolescence, climate change, environmental sustainability, and the list uh, goes on and on. Uh, these challenges really drive our work. Uh, they drive the research of our faculty and also the work that we do with students. Um, within that context, we have UCLA. The, the, we call it the great public university. Uh, we are over a hundred years old. And once again, this year, we're proud to have been ranked as the number one public university in the country. Uh, with our programs consistently placed among the top architecture and urban design programs in the US. Um, overall, we have a community of over 60,000 people uh, that includes uh, Nobel Prize winners, MacArthur Prize winners. This year we had two uh, MacArthur's, world-renowned artists and scientists, faculty and alumni in leadership positions in government, and a significant uh, group of alumni from our own department that are now leaders in architecture education, central figures in contemporary discourse, and award-winning designers. Um, I don't think this is a coincidence. Uh, an education in our department will train you as much in the professional practice of designing buildings and cities as it will also train you to become critical thinkers of architecture. And this is why it is very important that UCLA is a research university and that public service is one of the three core elements of the UC mission. UCLA is a tier one research institution with a commitment to serve the public. And that definitely translates in a lot of the frameworks that we use um, at school. Um, our department is one of four departments in the School of Arts and Architecture. The other departments are art, design media art, and world arts and culture and dance. Our school is also home to three internationally renowned public art units, uh, the Hammer Museum, the Fowler Museum, and the Center for the Arts and Performance, and they're all very close to our own building. And when you join UCLA, this uh, collective of architects and designers, artists and curators, researchers, policymakers, and overall uh, groundbreaking intellectuals, become they become your community for life. Um, AUD, our own department, is home to seven programs that engage in a range of activities from a liberal arts education with an emphasis on architectural studies all the way to our PhD program. Um, I'm going to just list them, although you can see them in the screen. We have two summer programs uh, for high school and college students that are considering an education in architecture. Uh, we have an undergraduate program, which is a two-year program that leads to a Bachelor of Arts in Architectural Studies. Uh, we have the Master of Architecture program, or MR1, as you would know it, uh, which is our largest program at the moment. 
Uh, we have a Master of Arts in Architecture, a Master of Science in Architecture and Urban Design, which is our post-professional degree, and the PhD program. Uh, many of you in the uh, Zoom would already know which program you would like to apply to. For others, uh, you will have time to ask questions about, um, excuse me, which program might be right for you. Uh, this is our home, Pearl of Hall. Uh, it is truly that sunny most uh, days. It sits in the middle of the historic Northern campus um, at UCLA. And here we all gather to study, to produce, debate and question. Um, I think in this building, we're all uh, lifelong learners. We train professional architects and urban designers, educators, um, scholars, curators, architectural thinkers, artists, and many of our graduates also end up in creative fields um, that are associated with design thinking and space making that might not be considered traditional um, architectural careers. We see value in questioning the architect's role in society and expanding the responsibilities and creative opportunities of future architects, basically designing what all of you are going to be doing in the world after you graduate. Um, since Today we are meeting online. I wanted to give you a glimpse of what our school uh, looks like. Um, and as I mentioned before, we're gearing up for midterms uh, next week or the other. And this is what the school is beginning to look like in preparation for reviews, uh, which are an important part of the culture of exchange in our department, where ideas and projects are shared within our community and with the extended architectural and design communities that um, span uh, from LA, uh, California, the US, and um, obviously our international colleagues. Um, every year at the end, we have a lot of moments throughout the year that are special, uh, but every year um, at the end of the year, we host an event called Rumble, and I wanted to share, share with you what it is about. Uh, this two-day event um, is a moment when the school becomes both a stage and a platform for sharing and discussing uh, projects and ideas, but also the pedagogical arc that connects our undergraduate, graduate, and post-professional programs with a range of perspectives that each student, each faculty, and each critic brings, and the knowledge that they also feed back into the curriculum as we imagine uh, what comes next. Um, which brings me to our faculty. Uh, this group of people um, is regarded as one of the most formidable design faculties in the United States, and it includes important thinkers and designers across uh, four generations. Uh, this is us today, what you see on the screen, a combination of architects, designers, critics, writers, scholars, makers, policy writers, and collectively committed educators. Uh, and to this amazing group of stable figures, Every quarter we add invited lecturers, visiting professors, and guest speakers that come for conferences and lectures and uh, to join us in teaching, in research, and in conversation. And they both expand, but also inflect our work. Um, we have a um, long history of design excellence. I really encourage you to go into our website and get to know more about the people that form this department. Um, inside and outside of studio and classes. We work with students on projects uh, to expand on research um, and really to focus in some of those great challenges that um, I mentioned before. Um, I want to spend a bit of time talking about the work of this uh, amazing group of people and um, more specifically as it leads to understanding the role of practice and research in our department. Uh, there is a lot of work I would love to show all of you today, but this is not a, le a lecture format. So I will just do like a brief tour of projects that the faculty at AUD is engaged with from the architectural to um, the research uh, base. Um, I will start with the work of Professor Neil Denari. Uh, if you come on the six, you will get to see the work of his studio. Here we see two of his buildings, one in the Highland in New York and the other one here in Los Angeles. Uh, this is one of my projects that I recently completed in Toronto uh, for an energy efficient house. Uh, this is the work of Kutan Ayata, which some of you will meet in the next session. He's our vice chair and the director of the uh, MART program. 
This is a housing project in Mexico and the Agricultural Resource Management Institute in South Korea. Did I get that right, Kutan? Uh, which is the result of a competition they uh, won a few months ago. Um, here are two projects, one in China and one in uh, Colombia, in Bogota, by Georgina Ulhich, who will be leading our careers uh, panel. Uh, this is the work of her office patterns. Uh, here we see the work of adjunct professors Darina Misraeyan and Jeffrey Nava for uh, new concepts of uh, workspace. Kevin Bailey and his office, KDA, uh, with a net zero design for the Houston Endowment Headquarters and a multifamily housing project in Santa Monica. Kevin is leading a lot of the projects that are challenging the housing uh, shortage in LA. Uh, here we see the work of Mohammed Sharif and Todd Lynch on the left, other uh, partners and both faculty at AUD, and Ben Franger with a recently completed house in LA. You will meet Ben uh, in the uh, portfolio workshop. And if you had a chance to keep pick up one of the latest Dwell uh, magazine issues, you will see uh, this house in the cover. Uh, here is the work of Miroslava Brooks, who's one of our newest additions to the faculty. Uh, she leads a firm called Forma, and these are some of her ideas about uh, leaky plants. Uh, an exhibition project by um, Heather Roberge. Uh, here we see some of the editorial work of our critical studies faculty, professors uh, Michael Osman, Ayala Levin, and Cristobal Amunategui. Uh, some of the editorial and curatorial work of Natasha Sandmeyer, who you will also meet in the next session if you're attending the MSAUD program presentation. Um, here we begin to shift into the more research-oriented work with material and fabrication research through 3D printing in the work of Yulia Corner from JK Design. Here you see some of the um, project images that helped Black Panther uh, win an Oscar for costume design this past year. But also um, I wanted to say that this work on 3D printing continues at school in the studio Fit for the Future that Yulia is teaching both last year and this year for a second iteration. Um, here we see the work of Gouven Chossel uh, with one of his robotic projects in exhibition and his installation for this year's Coachella Festival. Um, a lot of the work he does with students continues this work and research looking at artificial intelligence, robotics, virtual and augmented um, reality. Here we see the work of Professor Greg Lin, who you will also get to meet in the MSAUD session later today. Uh, who is working on the relationship between robots, architecture, and the public realm in the case of this image. Uh, Professor Hitoshi Abe's uh, projects with his own design atelier. And um, here I'm gonna take a pause from my presentation and I wanna invite Professor Dana Kaff, who's the director of City Lab and the Urban Humanities Initiative at AUD to briefly speak about the research labs in the department and the ways in which students can get involved. Thank you so much, Dana, for joining us. Please let me know uh, when you want me to move uh, for, to the next slide. Let's look at the next slide. Thanks, Mariana. So it's my pleasure to tell you a little bit about the two established and cutting edge research centers here in the Department of Architecture and Urban Design. The first one is led by my colleague whose work you've already seen, Hitoshi Abe, called XLab. And XLab is really an international think tank that works on designing with disaster rather than against it or um, after the fact. He's got a huge program that's really rooted here in Los Angeles and in Japan, but encompasses the entire Pacific Rim, where they think about new forms of architectural and urban design through the lens of our changing climate with fires, tsunamis, and earthquakes. And his lab really um, brings a kind of allyship across the entire Pacific Rim to think through data design and new, what he calls regenerative futures. You see examples of some of the work here, it's publications and exhibitions and design solutions that really started from his work after 311 and the great East Japan earthquake. Next. And then the center that I know a lot more about, which is my own center, uh, City Lab, and the Urban Humanities Program that we run within that. City Lab is a social and spatial justice 
focused lab that really emanates again from Los Angeles. I can't overemphasize how incredible it is to be a designer working in Los Angeles and someone who's uh, looking at urbanism. This city is maybe one of the most exciting for developing new theory as well as new practices that architecture really finds a uh, new form. We work on a project-oriented basis uh, that design research leads, leveraging the skills and discipline of architecture for real and impactful change. Uh, students really take the helm in much of this work where we undertake research on issues like secondary units and uh, ADUs, study that, uh, design around that, uh, develop state policy, which we authored and passed. And now many of our faculty are actually designing uh, secondary units, ADUs or granny flats across the state. So City Lab was the launch of something like potentially 10 million units of new housing. We're doing the same thing now with school land. Uh, and I think one of the things that I'd like to suggest to all of you who are thinking about coming here is that we have uh, always somewhere between a dozen and two dozen students working with us in a funded capacity, meaning we pay tuition as well as a stipend. And we also have ways for all students to get involved and Hitoshi's lab has the same. Um, one of the ways that students can get involved through City Lab is with the Urban Humanities Initiative, which is a year-long minor kind of for graduate students. It's a really a graduate certificate program where you work alongside planners and humanists over the course of an entire year to really learn new methods. And you get a kind of glimpse of the entire incredible university here at UCLA and th those programs are open each fall. So I'll hand it back to you now, Marla, thanks. Thank you so much, Dana. I, I will say that uh, these are uh, two of the, I call them demonstration projects because actually City Lab also builds things, uh, sometimes as proof of concept, like in the uh, UCLA Brewing Hub and sometimes as you know projects that leverage the kinds of policies that they're generating and um, a lot of our students um, at AUD do work uh, through uh, through the labs. Um, a lot of the work that you just, thank you again, Dana. Um, a lot of the work that you just saw is done in studios, in practices, in labs, and also in classrooms outside of the labs. Most of our faculty either have their practice or they conduct their own research in which students can also get involved. Uh, so you get to join, uh, join any and all of us in developing this work parallel from the classes that you might be taking. Um, parallel to this, we have every quarter an exciting public event series that include uh, lectures, uh, lunchtime discussions sometimes with our faculty and university guests, alumni talks, exhibitions, book launches, and a series of career events um, to support students. And we do this uh, regularly. There we go. These are some of the highlights of the event series taking place this fall. Uh, these are all open to the public and you're all welcome to join us if you want to uh, get to uh, visit the schools, uh, the schools through these opportunities. Um, I'm not going to talk about all the events, but they're all listed in our website and you have them on the screen. But um, our, I wanted to um, highlight the Friday, November 2nd and Saturday, November 3rd conference, Architecture of the Green New Deal, as it's a project that has spanned um, more than uh, one year and it's foregrounding issues of um, space making in the uh, context of uh, climate change. We have a super exciting group of people. So if you're interested, uh, please uh, come and join us. Um, I'm almost at the end, uh, as I said earlier, um, it's always really challenging to edit this segment of the presentation down because there's a lot of more work that I would like to show you, or uh, I would love for you to be able to hear directly from the authors of all of these projects. Uh, that is what we do in the spring open house and as we meet with you individually when you come to the school, but at least wanted to give you an overview or a glimpse into some of the work that is uh, going on here, the scope of interest and expertise of our faculty, 
um, and uh, some of the how these connect to the questions and ideas that embed in our curriculum and the work that we do with students, again, inside and outside of courses. Um, for us at AUD, I would say that pedagogy is a life project that links disciplinary, disciplinary knowledge and traditions uh, with contemporary challenges, questions, and of course, opportunities. Um, this, many of you might have already been on campus. For those of you that are far away or have not, this is an image of um, our courtyard, uh, the Pearl of Courtyard, after the Rumble reviews that marks the end of the academic year. And this is always a moment of celebration, also a moment of reflection. Uh, when we look back at the work that we produced collectively and also look forward to imagine what comes next. Uh, students are a critical part of this feedback, never ending feedback process and cycle where faculty and students work together uh, to shape the future of the department. Um, we have many channels to share our work, the work of our students and our day-to-day -day activities. And in the coming weeks and months, we will be posting information with deadline reminders and admissions events. So please check them out uh, to stay on top of news. And this is my last, my last slide, um, just to schedule as a reminder. And with that, I will pass it on to Travis again. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to meeting you all and have a good day, um, afternoon or night, wherever you are. And I'll see you soon. Travis, back to you. Thank you, Mariana. We are going to quickly move into the breakout room so we can stay on schedule. Uh, uh, my colleague Alberto is going to drop those various URLs into the chat so you can see where you are going. Uh, we have separate breakout sessions for the MARC, for the MSAUD, and for the MAPHD programs. Those will be wonderful opportunities to hear from faculty about those specific curricula and opportunities. Uh, and then we will uh, reconvene uh, at or around 5 p.m. Uh, to continue our uh, collective conversation. The director.
question here at AUD. Um, I just want to note we are uh, waiting for some members of our MARC session to join. Um, they should be wrapping within the minute. Um, so thank you for your patience. Um, as uh, is not unusual uh, at architecture school, uh, things tend to run five to seven minutes behind. Uh, so thank you for bearing with us. That said, just looking at the squares on my screen, um, I know that your next hour is filled with a lot of really wonderful insights and really wonderful people. Um, there's a really fascinating cross section of AUD alumni and graduates in this uh, session. Um, some of them are members of our faculty. Um, some of them are actually quite a few of them um, are very active pr uh, practitioners across uh, design practices. Um, and I know that there's a lot of really goodwill uh, and some really good insights and good ideas here. Um, so I look forward to hearing from each of them. Um, as always, please do uh, make use, if you wish, of the chat feature. Um, we are trying to uh, get to every question and every thought that um, arises there. Um, we, of course, want to be able to give you all as much information and insight into the AUD experience as possible. Um, and this really is a uh, particular and wonderful opportunity to get that kind of pipeline into what does life at AUD look like? What does it do for you? And where does it get you after graduation and beyond? Um, so again, thank you for your patience. Thank you for joining us. Um, I believe our MMARC folks are just starting to join. Um, so without further ado, I am going to pass the mic to uh, Georgina Hujic. Hi, everyone. Um, I am Georgina Hujic and um, well, I'm, um, an associate professor here in the department. I'm also alumni from the MR2 program um, several um, decades ago, uh, but I guess I know it's. I've been on both sides of the desk, so um, it's. Uh, yeah, I guess I mean I have I I know the department pretty well, but um, the um, I think it's a. And I, first of all, I want to welcome you all. Um, it's I know I know like sometimes Zoom can be a little bit I know intimidating for uh, like how to go through all the material, but I think I know this is a very good way for us to not just to be able to have I know, all the people that we want to include in this in this panel, uh, but also as a and as a way to make it accessible for um, everyone else. So um, as I was um, as a Travis mentioned um, most of us are, if not all of us, are also practicing um, architects and um, also, I mean, some of us also educators. I am personally, and I have my my firm patterns and I've been teaching here at UCLA for around 17 years. But uh, this is not really about me. This is about uh, presenting a group of uh, very esteemed and distinguished alumni um, like from 2003 and all the way to uh, last year. And, um, and I think it's gonna be a good opportunity to discuss uh, with each of them, um, what their um, interests were before they came to the department, what the interests were after they left the department, and um, and I guess I mean we like hopefully we have time for a good session of um, a, a questions and answers that uh, definitely I encourage everybody to write some questions or comments that you might have on the chat. And once we get into the uh, actual conversation or discussion, we'll try to accommodate that um, as well. So um, uh, Morgan, if you wanna share your screen, please. Okay. Um, so I guess I can manage it from here as well. So uh, as I was saying, um, well, today, I know we have this, this very amazing uh, group of uh, faculty and, um, and well, group of alumni, I know many of them faculty as well. I'm gonna introduce them uh, very briefly right now. And uh, so maybe if you guys just wanna say hi, 
and um, then I'll give you a little bit more of their background once they uh, present. So Nate Waddell, he graduated in 2021 from the MR1 program. Uh, thanks, um, Nate, for being here. Narina Mirzayan from the class 2003, the MR2 program, same class as me. Thanks, uh, Narina, for joining us. Max Kuo, class of 2008 from uh, the MR1 program, um, also faculty at the department, thanks. Uh, Max, Morgan Kopp uh, from last year's, uh, from two, uh, well, 2022 uh, MR1 program. Uh, Sam Sahani from the MR2, or the MSAUD program, she graduated in 2022. And, um, and Manya Rumpami with um, Rumpani, I'm sorry, um, Mania, it's always, it's difficult to pronounce your name. Uh, from the class of uh, 2020, also from the MS uh, AUD program. Um, so each of them is gonna present um, basically kind of the uh, one project from school, uh, one project from, um, or I mean, or maybe a few projects, but the work that they have produced right after they graduated and left the department and um, work that they are actually involved um, right now. So um, uh, let me, here we are. So um, Something that um, I think is going to be addressed, and uh, you guys are going to see it throughout the presentation of uh, our panel, is that um, I mean how our department, um, even though I know like pretty much I know concentrated on the um, I mean on the, the discipline of architecture as we all I know knew it before uh, coming here and we know it now, uh, but then how the different areas of expertise. Uh, post graduation. I mean, what are the, the the paths that many of our alumni have taken that actually moves? Um, I mean, moves. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say away, but it still stays within the broad, you know, a, a spectrum of what architecture is. Uh, but I guess it shows you the um, the many different possibilities and the many different. Um, uh, aspects of what is conceived as architecture as a discipline can actually, um, I mean, can actually take place into this you know, decision making when uh, the when you know, everybody when uh, students leave the department. So as you can see here in, uh, I mean, this is just a list of some of the things that um, our alumni are involved with. I mean, from uh, what is what we call architecture and architecture and planning, uh, working in and you know, like purely in architectural offices, but all the way to um, display technology, furniture and um, uh, furnishing manufacturing, um, game design, um, experience design, academia. So, I mean, I'm not gonna go through the entire list. I think, you know, this is also gonna be maybe discussed throughout the conversation, but uh, it's really important for us to uh, have you um, look at, um, yeah, I mean, like how how we can like really move through the discipline into a much, I mean, much broader um, a, a spectrum of uh, possibilities. Um, some ideas here, I mean, of like what the what our alumni current employment is, as you can also see, very um, distinguished uh, companies and institutions. Um, this is just a, you know, a glimpse of uh, what um, our alumni um, is doing right now. Of course, I mean, this list can be expanded uh, much further. And then something that I consider to be also really important is how uh, our own faculty, um, all of us who um, are practitioners, uh, how, I mean, we always um, have uh, hired and have collaborated with our alumni uh, body. And this is just also a, a list of some of us that have you know, constantly worked with um, former students. And I guess, I mean, that also talks about the very intimate relationship that exists between uh, faculty and students because of the size of our department and the fact that, I mean, 
uh, students get to have a lot of uh, different um, options for working not just elsewhere, uh, but also, I mean, in a way, develop a relationship with faculty throughout the years of the program. And, and then, I mean, continue to nature, um, a, yeah, some of those ideas and that work uh, throughout the um, a, the practices, throughout, through working in, in uh, the different offices after they graduate. Um, this is just a, a Kind of a quick glance as, um, at also like what the our international students applications have been. I mean, this is not particularly driven towards a group of alumni, but just for you to uh, have an idea of, um, I mean, the audience that we have in the department. I mean, these are mainly uh, applications, but then we have a very um, a important and, and I would say impressive um, a group of international students and of course i mean students that come from um, most uh, states um, here in in the us um, so um let me see where are we now okay so i guess i mean we are ready um to um begin to um with the uh, presentations of our of our guests um i guess i mean it's needless to say uh i'm really excited to be uh moderating um this panel and to hear from i mean these uh six individuals that are i mean extremely uh successful on what they do and uh whom um i mean kind of like constant uh, relationship back to our department has been i think crucial uh for the department um as well. So, as I said before, uh, please write uh, comments or questions in the um, in the chat, and we'll try to accommodate um, these once we finish. So, the format of this is that um, we're going to have um, each of them um, go through a quick presentation of the projects that I mentioned before, and then uh, we are. Um, Gonna yeah open the floor for uh, questions and um, answers. So uh, Nate um, Waddle, as uh, well, he graduated in uh, 2021. Uh, you can read there. I mean, more or less, <laughs> a very brief um, I don't know, a, a, a kind of I know a idea of the I know the very impressive uh, career and uh, that Nate has had. Of, he was my student, so I mean, I think a lot of the the, the, the guests that you are going to be you know, uh, seeing present were my students. So um, I guess, I mean, this also talks about you know, a series of, you know, or, or at least like two generations of uh, alumni that are, I mean, not just involved in the, you know, in teaching uh, in the department, but also in their own uh, practice. So Nate, it's... Hi, everyone. Um, Nate Waddell. Um, yep, I'm an alumni. I'm our class of 21. Um, I'm going first today because essentially I have the, the most pragmatic uh, or traditional background in architecture. I have an undergraduate degree in architecture. I worked in an office for a few years after graduation. I went back to get my MARC and am working in an architecture office again. Um, so Morgan, you can keep going through the slides. Um, keep going, you can go to the timeline. Um, yeah, so this is a little bit of my background. I finished my undergrad in 2014. Um, I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I went to a, a state school there, a very sort of like pr pragmatic program that just introduced you to the profession. Everyone sort of stayed and worked in Milwaukee after that. Um, I took a four-year gap working, and then I made the decision to apply to, apply to grad school um, moved out to LA, um, continued to work part-time um, while I was in grad school, and then graduated in 21. I'm currently a project designer at Rios, which is a multidisciplinary um, firm based here in LA with offices around the world. Um, in addition to that, um, I have a small sort of personal practice where I do, um, you know, kind of scratch that residential itch of 
um, small remodels in ADUs. All right, next slide. So again, my like undergrad experience, I just want to illustrate on the left. This was kind of a diagram of um, how it looked and felt. It was a very homogenous program. It was super contained, um, as in everybody was either from the state I grew up in or the neighboring state, and pretty much everyone stayed there after graduation. And for me, that was never a enough. And I, I was really seeking a graduate education that was going to be much more diverse, that was going to focus on an area um, of the world that was much bigger than myself and the city that I was in. And I thought LA was a perfect place to sort of um, you know, to sort of test this um, graduate study. So you can go to the the next two slides and um, keep going. This is my final research project that I did at AUD. And I think this is an illustration of like why LA is, is bigger than the city that it is. Um, it focuses on um, a, a, a lake that essentially used to um, um, serve the the water supply of Los Angeles, but it's since dried up. But um, as a result, it's just kind of caused all of these. You can just keep going through the slides as I'm talking, Morgan. Um, but as it dried up, it um, you know continued to create all these um, you know complex um, aesthetic and um, economic problems. So my um, graduate project really focused on the aesthetics of um, kind of satellite imagery and um, specifically that of lithium. Um, and then these, um, yeah, kind of final images sort of illustrate the, uh, the breadth of work, the sort of skill set that you develop um, while you're at AUD, um, you know, going from sort of simple diagramming, um, conceptual ideas at the beginning to really, really rigorous, intense image making exercises. Um, all right. And then in terms of my sort of professional work, um, the first project that I did after graduation um, was a very simple um, exercise of an office relocation relo um, for a company. Um, in a sense, this sort of felt like second year um, uh, grad school to me, whereas kind of a, just a, a lesson of packing and arranging and aggregation of program. Um, but in addition to that, um, the skills that you developed here, producing some really beautiful visuals and sort of testing the way that you represent images. Um, you can go to the next one. And then the project that I'm currently working on right now, um, it's for an athletic company, um, their LA headquarters. Um, this project um, has really felt to me like an academic exercise, like I'm back in grad school. Um, the client that we're working with is um, they're they're all ex architects or designers. Um, they speak our language and um, they have the same degrees as we do. And so, uh, because of that, we're able to test a lot of these different image um, sort of making techniques, um, representational ideas um, that you could test in school in front of a client, um, which became a really rich, um, interesting experience. And um, currently, uh, yeah, the project is um, somewhat on hold, but um, as you can see, um, you know, the design progressed really far and, um, you know, it wouldn't um, have resulted this way had I not chosen AUD as um, my graduate institute. Thank okay. you. You were right on time. Thank you so much. So um, I'd like to introduce you all to Narina Mirzayan. Um, Narina and I actually graduated together in 2003. And I guess, um, Narina, I'm, I'll let you introduce yourself through your work. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, Georgina. Um, nothing is, is uh, uh, sobering as being on the alumni panel with your students. <laughs> but it's always... Um, it's always a real pleasure to uh, com come into to to have any opportunity to commingle. So I'm, I'm very delighted about that. Okay, we're gonna try. I'm gonna try to see if I can pass the slides on my end. I don't know if that will work. I don't think so. I'll just yeah. let me know. Okay, yeah. that was a rumor. Okay, so it was you, Morgan. Yeah, it was a rumor. <laughs> All right, wishful thinking. All right, someday. Okay. Well, so um, 
Uh, yeah, I, I have really dug deep for this presentation. So I thought it would be kind of fun and interesting to present um, across my time at UCLA, um, my time right after UCLA and my time currently, but through the lens of um, a few scales as well as different durations. So with that said, um, I dug deep to find the um, year I was an MR2, same class as Georgina. Um, I worked on the second installment of LA Now, which is a award-winning win publication that um, was a kind of three-year and then for LA particularly, and then a multi-year kind of project that Tom Main participated in at UCLA for various cities. This was the project that, that this was my project. There were a number of projects in this book um, and this one and the book itself won a PA award. And that was the incredibly uh, kind of gratifying experience to work on a kind of, um, let's say research project during a year, which is how long the MR2 program is uh, or was at, at UCLA. Um, and then see this kind of go out into the world in the way of a publication and and sort of, um, you know, uh, garner um, some interest in, in the world. So very short duration, lots of impact um, from a kind of starting out one's career uh, as an architecture um, sort of, you know, uh, buff and and wanting to really participate to the to the fullest in uh, in the kind of intellectual um, sort of trajectory of the of the uh, practice. And then um, next, please, Morgan. Thank you. <laughs> so I um, I spent a short stint uh, at a smaller office, a Los Angeles office, but uh, called Graft for a couple of years. But then I um, made a transition to Gary Partners here in LA. Um, that's the the practice of Frank Gehry, um, where I spent eight and a half years uh, practicing on uh, eight and a half years working on multitude of projects uh, around the world. This is the last project that I worked on. Yeah, you could just flip through the slides. Um, I chose this project. It was near and dear to my heart. At that time, I'd become a kind of associate and I was uh, fairly had fairly large responsibilities on this project, but also this project, uh, sort of came to fruition and those photographs that you're seeing were taken after I left the office. <laughs> so just goes to show you things that you start and I spent oh, nearly four years of my time at Gary on this project, but it really, um, so the, the sort of, it was buttoned up after I left. So perhaps the longest duration uh, of, a, of a project that um, I participated in, um, though there were many at Gary and Partners. Um, uh, so these were the last images, maybe transitioning more to what I did after Gary Partners, which was to start my own practice um, and also start teaching um, at UCLA. Uh, I taught a bit while I was at Gary Partners as well, but obviously couldn't commit in the same capacity that, that I was able to once I was practicing on my own. Um, and so the the kind of interests that I had as a student, maybe working on my research project with Tom, um, you know, carrying that through to a smaller, more boutique office at Graft, carrying it through to a small interests at a larger office at Gary Partners, and then bringing it home to my own practice through, um, I've chosen three practice, three projects that are maybe smaller in scale, mid-scale, and a, a bit larger in scale for, for us. This is a, a largely interior project. It's a sort of cookie cutter um, strip mall building and um, where there are, this is a very Los Angeles typology. And in this particular box, they were outfitting a pediatric dental clinic. So it was an entirely introverted world um, and one that we uh, had to design as a sort of series of experiences, but ultimately framed within a kind of black box, let's say. Um, so you can, yeah, Morgan. And so, you know, the sort of drawings that we make are still as I'd like to think as exuberant and kind of um, fun as the drawings that I made as a student in, at school. Uh, and so, um, they're useful because a lot of the work that we do also calls upon color and 
patterns and texture to evoke uh, different legibilities um, and different experiences, but they're also just really uh, great to work on as artifacts themselves. So that's a smaller project. This is a mid-scale project, a project that's a duplex in the Hollywood Hills. So we're sort of partaking in the whole conversation here in LA that's um, focused on housing and the housing crisis and the kind of agency of architects um, as it intersects with that as a sort of industry that that requires thought and um, consideration. Um, you can move forward with this one too. So it's a it's a kind of typical lot um, on the hillside, and this is a kind of intervention at the lower end of the lot. There's a lot of discussion about um, the kind of prototypic uh, ADUs that that you know that Los Angeles has sort of initiated that can that can get permitted and propagated on lots, but this one in particular takes the hillside lot as its um, as as its site for inquiry. So there's a a little bit of a kind of intellectual exercise and in trying to figure out how to standardize some some addition uh, that might be able to be propagated in just more than this particular site. And lastly, uh, a kind of larger project for us, which was, um, it's a co-op winery. So uh, um, a, a tank farm, a hospitality, um, a tank farm, a barrel storage area, and a hospitality wing for a cooperative um, that's located not here in Armenia. Um, this project entailed site planning as well as planning the entire extents of the winery. And at my time at Frank Gehry, I got to participate on a winery design on two actually very briefly. So to sort of have an opportunity in my own practice to come across one that's smaller in scale, but maybe such a niche typology to, to kind of round out the experience of going out in the world and working for someone else and then being able to bring that experience home i think is a, a kind of interesting and uh, interesting place and fortunate place to be thank you so much Arina. that was wonderful oh. i wish we would have 30 minutes or an hour for yeah each of you to talk over everything so uh max max Guo is our next um guest Thank you. Um, I, I just want to, before I launch into my presentation, there are, uh, I see that there is a question in the, oh, it just got taken away. But if you want to post questions, we will try to um, have some time for a Q&A. And maybe I could even suggest that for the alumni that are on the panel, if you're, if you're willing to maybe share your email addresses so that um, the audience can write to you directly afterwards uh, if they think of any questions later on. Um, but uh, onto, onto the show, um, it was really, really lovely to go after Narina. I will say that actually LA Now was one of the reasons why I applied to uh, UCLA. Seeing um, out in the world, like I come from um, an arts, fine arts background, and I was very much interested in the discourse of art, and, uh, uh, intersections of art, architecture, and urbanism. And I had started to notice just a lot of publications out in the wild of um, designers who were faculty at UCLA and making things that did not look like architecture. And so this was something that I was fundamentally interested in is like, they're calling this stuff architecture. It doesn't look like architecture. I'm absolutely intrigued and I wanna study here. And I think that legacy and that through line continues on. Um, sorry, go back, Morgan. One, and you're, you're, you've been an amazing slide whisperer. Um, <laughs> Uh, I have about 10 seconds on each slide. So some will go a little faster, some will go a little slower. We'll, we'll try to work it out. But I'll show three projects, very straightforward. One from while I did uh, in, in school at UCLA, and then a project that transitioned this out of school, and then um, some just one of the projects that I'm working on, quite simply. Okay. Um, yeah, slide. Next. Um, okay, so this is a really, so thinking about Architecture that does not look like architecture. I think this is something that happens a lot at UCLA. It, it's very much, um, at least the MR program is a very disciplinary program, meaning we are always talking about architecture with a capital A, but architecture with a capital A isn't always buildings, right? So it's about importing things out in the world to influence and inspire us to rethink what, uh, what architecture can actually be in, in uh, broadening the, the potential of what that is. 
So this is a really weird project taught by Jason Kane. We were looking at roof thatching, but also it, thinking about the world of hair styling and the anatomy of the skull to inform uh, uh, architecture of roof thatching. And so here we're working with technologies of vacuum forming, which is in our shop. We were milling things, vacuum forming them, and then using the mold as molds to then mold a kind of form, um, use it as a formwork to mold a wood members across them, a lattice work of wood, and then beginning to thatch the hair onto it. You can continue on, Morgan. Um, and really thinking at this time um, at UCLA, it was very much, um, there was a kind of, say it was one of the very few schools that was at the very vanguard of digital form making and fabrication thinking about intricacy and complexity um, computationally and how that would materialize in the world of um, sen sensate matter and materialism. And here we're doing a series of drawings of that architecture that is trying to articulate this, this ma strange material world where roof thatch becomes exuberant, begins to cascade down, to become curtains and worlds that enfold us. So that's um, uh, the that was the project. No, 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 you're good. You're good. Let's let's start start off the next project. So this project is um, very, very much carrying on uh, extending that project of, let's say, digital fabrication intricacy and, and testing it out in the real world. So we began designing this project our last quarter at UCLA and then using the this is not this is not allowed. So I'm not condoning this but we used the shop at UCLA all summer long to fabricate this project, which was for a shoe store located in Chinatown, Los Angeles. And it, you can see here in the plan on the right-hand side, basically you have a shoe wall, a display wall of shoes that was um, built up out of an egg crate that would serve as storage in the back of house. So it was a perfect scale where we were taking a lot of the ideas we were exploring in school and actually doing it for a client but commercial project out in the real world. I think we probably um, fabricated uh, at least $250,000 worth of work through the UCLA shop, basically milling these things out, producing these drawings as both communicating a sense of uh, um, affect and atmosphere, but also as a construction drawing. And really thinking about how, and so you can see here, this is the, the wood shop at UCLA, the CNC mill that you have access to. And the in the, the middle image are the shoe platforms, each one completely custom um, milled out. Here's the egg crate that you can see that gets built up and taken to, to the site. And this was our first project out of school. Um, and my classmates from that year, here you see Alex Chu lounging around on our modules that we're building. Um, we're still partners to this very day. So um, the first few years out of school, we were moonlighting on our own projects as Nate is currently doing. Um, and during the daytime, uh, working in the offices of other architects, kind of doing, trying to have it all um, at the same time. And so here you can see some final images um, of that retail space. Um, and again, this, this shoe wall was very important to us really projecting a kind of atmosphere out to the social space, um, the, the plaza that the, um, this, this uh, project is adjacent to. Um, sorry for the background noise. I'm open. Uh, and, and yeah, you can see that fine. Um, and finally, a project that we're working on right now in the office, alongside other projects, we're currently working on a couple, um, we always have some residential projects, renovations happening in the office. Also, we're currently working on a wellness space for the School of Theater, Film, and Television. And then finally, looking at these um, residential projects where uh, ex examining um, how uh, the problems, uh, the, the, the housing shortage and crisis in LA and being innovative and thinking about how these, in, these infill projects can really uh, develop a large, um, be connected to a lot of set of, a larger set of urban networks across the city. And so thinking here, thinking about facade, uh, this is, this house sits at the corner of a site, um, and thinking about how, um, this residential fabric can produce images that project beyond itself, playing around with, um, the, the ideas of twinning and, and two-facedness of this project. 
how the skin of the house then ex uh, pulls off and becomes a neighborly fence at the scale um, rising from, let's say, the two story and extending down to the height of a human scale, producing uh, neighborly interactions with cloth. And you can see how the doubling of the skin is constantly producing all of these thresholds. As the city continues to densify, we're looking for pressure points that we can begin to alleviate and pr produce um, entry points of egress that can maximize the effects of the community, um, the spatial experiences of um, crossing over these thresholds, um, et cetera. And you can see some of these elevations. Um, again, you, we're, we're trying to imbue all of our drawings with the same level of intensity, thinking about skin versus massing versus elevation and the, uh, the meanings and significances of all of those things. Um, lessons that we learned in school that we're continue, continuing to carry on, as well as the idea that no matter what scale of project that you're working on, you can um, continuously to pack them and condense them with ideas, complexity, and significance. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Max. Um, so um, we are moving into Morgan's um, presentation. Thanks, Morgan. Hi, uh, Max, sorry for, you know, I hope it worked out, but we're, <laughs> we're dealing. Um, I wanted to focus my presentation a little bit on all the people who helped me get here and specifically four people or five um, who have helped me throughout school and then even after. So throughout my studies, I worked part-time at Sharif Lynch Architecture with Mohammed Sharif and Todd Lynch. Um, and then Georgina invited me to teach with her in Marseille for a workshop. I have been helping Yulia Kana direct the summer program for three, four years. And now I teach at UCLA and I'm a project designer with uh, Young Nayada. So just a little bit of an overview of how intertwined my life has become in UCLA for the better, mostly for the better. Um, so, but before going into that, also showing a little bit of student work, this was my final research uh, studio with my partner Wei Q uh, under the supervision of Kuta Nayada. We looked at transforming um, the Warner Brothers studio lot in Burbank and flipping without going into much details, but it was very much about looking at the future of LA and the possibility of uh, things changing and how this might create a new urban landscape. So the idea of context, the idea of like what the city of LA one day will be and uh, how we may think through these possibilities through weird images, um, something that happens a lot at UCLA, both with Kutan, Ayada, and then also even with Georgina in my studios with Georgina Hulej, where we look at architecture and nature and maybe the glitches that are representational, but then have a real affect in, in reality. And then again, um, just to zoom into all the opportunities that I was given, uh, I was able to work at really small scales, uh, designing ADUs that slip in between very dense contexts in Los Angeles with Sherry Flinch architecture. Um, Georgina and I co-taught a, a workshop in Marseille, so we even go abroad. And again, looking at image making and the idea of speculative scenarios that are not really uh, real yet, but might, but kind of look real and the strangeness that arises in them. And then a quick shout out to uh, if you don't have an architecture background and want a little bit of like help before uh, joining our program, we also have the Jumpstart program. It's a four week course in the summer that I co-direct with, you, well, associate direct with Yulia Kana, who's phenomenal. Um, I have taught in it previously, but this year we'll be just helping in um, getting it running because it's a lot of work. And then ever since, uh, I am now a, a lecturer at UCLA. I, uh, I'm sure Miroslava spoke about the mediation series previously. These are one of the courses that I'm teaching, as well as being a full-time project designer at Young and Ayata, designing an agriculture institute in South Korea, which is uh, strange to say the least in every good way possible. Um, so it's just every year you have these presentations and you kind of reflect on how you continue to talk to be involved in 
all of these people's lives and how they continue to help you. So it's a very special place and I can only vouch for it in a pretty great way. Thank you, Morgan. Thank you so much. Um, Sam. Thanks, Georgina. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Samiksha Sahani. I graduated from the MSAUD program in 2022 um, and have been working at UCLA AUD as the technology and facilities manager since then. Um, I had a strong foundation in traditional architecture before joining UCLA. Um, I previously worked at the largest architecture firm in India. Um, however, my decision to enroll in UCLA's MSAUD program was driven by my aspirations to kind of broaden my horizons through the utilization of um, cutting edge technology. UCLA has provided me with the opportunity to do just that. Um, and I'd like to offer you a sneak peek of my experiences during, sorry, uh, Morgan, can you go back to? Um, experiences during and after the program. Um, I'm gonna start off by talking about my studio project from school. Um, next, please. My studio project was taught by professors Greg Lynn, Matt Conway, and Maya Oswaldik. We collaborated with Arrival, which is a UK-based firm who specialize in electric vehicles and microfactories. Our studio focused on designing the street as a reconfigurable network of infrastructure for the LA 2028 Olympics. We studied the relationship between circulation of people and goods and the structures using game design engines like Unity and an extended reality model. The main aim of our project was to explore a long-term legacy plan um, to host millions of people from around the world, but at the same time, considering its long-term use for the local community of the city. Mobility of structures was the key concept. Uh, next, please. The MSAUD program provided the facilities and allowed me to explore different forms of technology. Um, I have been able to use the skills of coding and fabrication I learned as a student and further develop them during my time here to help assist students and faculties in their studio and tech seminar projects. Last year, we explored clay fabrication using robots. Students develop skills and experience in visual programming, robot motion planning, as well as materials such as clay and concrete. They chose either robotic clay 3D printing or robotic stamping and created life-size models to represent facade and column studies. The facilities AUD provides allow students to explore and experiment. We house a large shop, CNC machines, and a large number of 3D printers. These show, sorry, so these show a few projects we fabricated in-house. They use a combination of CNC, laser cutting, and 3D printing to fabricate. We also film these models using pre-programmed tool parts on the robots. Next, please. The last project uh, was a project I recently worked on titled Digital Do It in collaboration with our faculty, Matt Conway, um, and various industry professionals, which included a director, project manager, projectionist, music composer, choreographer, dancer, and videographer. Digital Do It seeks to explore relationships between man and machine through a mixed media production uh, performance involving dance choreography, motion capture technology, and robotic amateur projections. End effector projectors attached to responsive robotic arms allows for graphics to move in connection with the dancer's location, forging a connection between movement and space. This project enabled us to investigate how to bring digital into physical and use robots as part of our environment. Um, UCLA AUD has served as a platform for both experimentation and exploration, while also fostering the development of enduring connections with industry experts and faculty members. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sam. That was wonderful. And uh, Manya, your um, yes, your is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Gistimani Rumpani, but I go by Manya, and I attended the MSAUD program at UCLA and graduated from the entertainment studio in 2020. Next slide. 
So my journey is probably the most unorthodox out of the folks here today. So I have to start by saying that the main driver throughout my studies and professional life has always been curiosity. Uh, so the things I don't understand, they don't scare me. Uh, they invite me to explore them. And that has resulted in a collection of quite diverse projects and experiences that might seem disjointed at first, but really it doesn't take long to realize that my unconventional path has been shaped by two things, uh, my innate investigative urges um, and my studies at UCLA. So here's how the story goes. Next slide. Um, when I was deciding what graduate school to attend, I already had five years of, of professional experience in architecture. Uh, so to me, UCLA's MSA UD and specifically the entertainment studio presented the perfect balance of stepping out of my comfort zone while being part of a school with a strong architecture practice. Why? Because I wasn't sure I wanted to leave architecture. I wanted to try it out and see what my architectural background brought to the table. So what you see here is my final UCLA project, uh, Incognito, a 10 minute animated film that I did with Alikia Maladi and Yan Wang Yang under Natasha Sanmayer and Nathan Su. So in the process, we advanced our technical world building and storytelling skills. And right when we wrapped up Incognito, another UCLA faculty, Garrett Ricciardi, saw our work and he invited us to collaborate on a professional project with his firm, Formless Finder. Next slide. Um, so the short film we made for Formless Finder and the Architectural League 2020 exhibition is pretty straightforward in terms of how it relates to our studies, plus how the UCLA AUD community was the reason we got this opportunity to showcase what we mastered within the entertainment studio. Next slide. So that same summer of 2020, uh, Iman Ansari, who was another one of my UCLA instructors asked me to join Anonymous, his transdisciplinary design firm. And one of the projects I, work, I worked on was North Star Medical Campus. Uh, North Star's design emerged through an iterative simulation process. So the versatility of using digital media for experiential design purposes was, uh, sorry, experimental design purposes was a very much needed skill here. Uh, now, the co-founder of Anonymous, Marta Novak, was also the instructor for the MSAUD Mobility Studio while I was at UCLA. So I hope you start to see all the connections there. So although she never was my instructor, she was very aware of my range because we coexisted at school every day. Uh, so Marta was working with Google R&D at the time. And when a position opened up in her team, she thought I'd be a good fit and I agreed. Uh, so joining Google R&D as an innovation manager was perfect for me. It was all about design research and experimentation, coming up with new concepts and prototypes for the future hybrid workplace at Google. Uh, and architecture school had equipped me with some critical transferable skills. Um, I had the means to deliver stories to different audiences. I knew how to manage and coordinate a project. And I was great at writing uh, for conveying concepts to my stakeholders. And by the way, big corporations also means big NDAs. So I cannot show you anything other than what's been made public, like what we see here. So eventually I transitioned from designing products for tech employees to developing tech tools for designers instead, which is how I joined Nike as a senior product manager for digital product creation. And my job essentially is to lead a cross-functional squad that develops the 3D design tools for footwear designers. So uh, one of my selling points for getting the position uh, was the expertise in digital media that I acquired at UCLA. A product manager is known as the voice of the user. So I thought, I am a designer. I have used all these tools and have the projects to, to prove that. So I can understand their main pain po points in practice and how the right feature prioritization can make or break a product. So yeah, that argument worked. That's why I'm still at Nike now. Uh, and while I cannot tell you or show you exactly what I've been working on, I can say that in about a year from now, the whole line of a certain popular footwear product will have all been uh, designed and manufactured using one of the tech tools that I've been leading. So yeah, stay tuned and ask me again in a year. Thank you.
Thanks so much, Manya. That was um, it's great to end this panel with a shoe in the in the screen. Um, <laughs> so, um, well, before we move into uh, questions and answers, um, we would like to, and maybe uh, Morgan, you could go to the next. Uh, there you are. Thank you. So um, Todd Lynch, um, who was mentioned also by uh, Morgan before, uh, he's um, faculty in our department, and um, he's an expert on everything that relates to professional practice. So he cannot be here today, but uh, he um, he prepared a video for us on basically, um, yeah, how to process an architectural uh, license and how to um, yeah, I mean, how to go through that and especially, um, I mean, right after um, school. So please, if you can play it and one could think- Is the sound going to work? Yeah. Todd um, very generously also um, suggested that, I mean, if you guys have any specific questions about this, you can email him uh, directly. I, his, I think his email was in the previous page, but we'll place it in the chat as well. Do you hear that? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm happy to introduce myself as the architect licensing advisor for UCLA architectural design. I also teach here in the program on professional practice and construction. I'm really focused on the to turn visions and designs into the business and building. So um, one of those things that I'm here to speak about is how your education fits into the future. Over now, just to to um, oh, Morgan. Sorry, Morgan. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's yeah, it's been very difficult to hear. I think that's a so maybe what we'll do is to post the video in the um in the I think that's a great idea. And um oh Todd, you are showing Hello. Hi. I'm actually yes, i I have been able to um stop the the moving vehicle long enough to join the this discussion here. So I am actually available. Uh, I, I'm just not able to really share my screen or anything from where I am, but uh, I can, uh, yeah, I can reiterate that the information on the video will be, uh, you know, helpful in, in terms of orienting you towards where your uh, AUD education can fit in the general um, pathway to licensure of uh, education and uh, also examination, uh, sorry, education experience and examination, those three things. And so uh, it details information about NCARB's AXP program and the ARE, also some information about the uh, CSE exam that is required for California. So those three things. If you have specific questions about your situation, whether you are coming uh, to UCLA uh, as uh, an undergraduate or a graduate for the professional program or a postgraduate for MSAUD, or PhD program, anything uh, related to licensure or uh, those issues, please feel free to uh, email me. And uh, that information is available on AUD's website and also at the end of the video that'll be posted. So thank you. Thank you, Todd. That was good timing that you could join us. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so I, mean, I actually I have so many questions. Um, I know we have limited time, but I'll, um, yeah, let's see how we can manage to at least address a few of them. And um, I guess, I mean, one of them, um, I mean, has to do with, um, I mean, how much of a preconception uh, you guys had before coming to UCLA in terms of the work that you were going to be doing after, right? It's like, I mean, you, did you even know the name of, I know, like some of the firms that you have worked with after or that some of your, your uh, classmates have um, worked with? Um, I don't know who wants to take the, the shoot. <laughs> I can I can answer that uh, because I could have never imagined that a lot of the roles I assumed after graduation uh, would I, I didn't even know these roles existed or how they could relate to architecture, uh, which I love because one of the reasons, uh, like I think Max said earlier, that I chose UCLA was because 
hey, what they do, they say it's architecture, but it doesn't necessarily look like architecture. And it kind of looks bizarre and intriguing. And I want to be a part of it. Uh, and I also would like to note that as a person, I do not believe in setting finite goals. I think success can have many forms and shapes. Uh, so that's how I keep moving. And I have this mindset. I just follow my intuition. This is what I did at UCLA and followed what felt right in terms of uh, the continued development uh, and growth. So definitely didn't have a lot of the information that I, I know now. So the, the answer is no. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. No for me as well. I think I worked at a huge firm before, which was Herzog and Moron in Switzerland, which is very different to LA. Like if you want to think of Switzerland and LA, they're kind of like antithesis of each other. Um, and I didn't think I would, I realized in LA that I wanted to work for a small firm and have more of a centralized role in that. So those were just not things, maybe it's also just as you kind of continue um, to grow that you realize you don't you would prefer being a, a big pond a big fish in a small pond rather than the other way around as well I think before um, I think at first and by at first I mean before entering the program um, it was scary and I wasn't sure what I'm getting into especially um, because I came from a traditional architecture background but I was getting into a very non-traditional course um, so I think after joining the program with the help of my professors, um, I think it was them who showed us what, what is the broad scope of jobs that awaits us outside, especially because we're in LA. Um, so to answer your question, Georgina, no, um, okay. Um, um, there is, uh, Georgina, I'm going to jump in for a second. Yes, please. Uh, Robert has a question about GRE requirements. I don't know if um, Mariana wanted to uh, Yeah, jump actually, in. I tried to answer on the uh, question on the Q&A, but uh, the technology is challenging me. Um, I wanted to share that it took us, a, we were waiting for a small approval from the university, but it's very safe to announce right now in this chat that the we are able to announce officially that the GRE requirement has been dropped. And uh, so, um, yes, uh, we just needed a few more signatures to be able to announce this officially. The SAOs will be speaking about this uh, later as well, but just I wanted to respond this live. That's so wonderful to hear. I wish we, I mean, for all of us, we would, that would have been the case, I don't know, 15 years ago, you have made a big difference. <laughs> Anyhow, so um, I guess, I mean, uh, Manya, you were talking, I mean, actually, you you touched on, um, like, how um, the, the skills and the knowledge that you acquire at UCLA, I mean, how that um it, it prepare you or was I know, useful like how useful it was for your um I mean in your career but I'm curious to hear what the others think about that Nate what do you think <laughs> sorry I was I was typing an answer to uh one of the the questions in the chat do you mind repeating it of course. So what do you, th I mean, what skills or, or knowledge um, that you actually learn throughout the program you found uh, actually most useful in your uh, post-graduation mm -hmm. career? Yeah, I think um, the type of office that I'm in right now, you work with a lot, a lot of different client types and with different client types come different modes of representation in the way that you talk about architecture and design. Um, and I think AUD, um, you know, especially being on the quarter system, you have a lot of studios, a lot of electives. Um, and so you're able to sort of test these, um, representation, um, approaches very quickly. And so I found that translation in the workplace to be super, super beneficial. 
Okay. Um, thank you so much. I, I'm being told that we need to wrap up, unfortunately. Um, so um, I, well, I'm very thankful for um, everybody participating on the panel. Uh, Morgan, Manya, Narine, uh, Sam, Nate, um, and Max and um, Todd, of course. And so I look forward to, I mean, to the prospect of uh, meeting you all at some point. And um, yeah, thank you all again. So to you, Mariana. Thank you, everybody. Uh, wonderful to see you present and have you back um, at AUD. Uh, we are going to move now to the uh, student um, affair officers to talk about the admissions process, scholarships, and financial aid. So I'm going to invite Jim and Berlina to take over. And again, uh, please um, feel free to uh, put questions in the chat. And I'll be back in a minute. Jim, Berlina, and thanks everybody to in the career panel. Hi, thanks, Mariana. Um, I need someone to enable my screen sharing. And then I will share my screen and we'll get my, there we go. Sure. Um, so thank you, everyone. My name is uh, Jim Keyes. I'm a student affairs officer here in the Department of Architecture and Urban Design. And I have been uh, here in the department about 25 years. So please uh, make sure to take advantage of the fact to um, ask any questions. Um, I would suggest putting them in the Q&A because that way I can type in uh, answers while the rest of the um, presentations are going on. But please make sure any, any just sort of bureaucratic functional type questions you might have, please go ahead and direct those my way. Um, on this slide, we see the graduate admissions materials that are required for all of our graduate programs. So we have a statement of purpose where you would describe things like your academic goals, the reasons you want to come to UCLA. Uh, in addition to that, a personal statement where you would talk about your personal, social, cultural experiences um, that uh, guided your academic journey um, to, uh, and just sort of relay those to the faculty. Both of those documents are separate uh, documents, so make sure to submit um, separately for each of them. And there's uh, more descriptive and more details on exactly what we're looking for, both on our website and in the uh, online application. In terms of transcripts, we just need you to upload uh, digital copies of your transcripts. No physical copies uh, need to be sent in at this time. We just need them for review purposes. Um, as Mariana just said, the GRE scores are no longer required. So for any, all of our graduate programs, you do not need to submit the GRE. Um, please note that on some of the website's um, information, especially over at the graduate division, that has not quite been changed yet, but I'm told that um, within the next uh, three to four days that will be updated. So just note that if you still see it in a couple places saying that it's required that we are working to get that changed in all the places that it is listed. So uh, bear with us, but uh, please know you, uh, if you don't wish to, you do not need to take the GRE. Um, a lot of people will choose to submit a CV or a resume, but uh, that is optional, but uh, you do have the option to do that. Um, for students who have not studied for two years uh, in the US or at a school uh, located in a country where English is both, um, is where you learned in English and it's the spoken language of everyday life. For example, countries like the UK, Australia, New Zealand, Canada. Um, if you have not studied for two years in a country like that, in a school, then you will be required to take the TOEFL or IELTS. That, uh, those test scores should be no more than two years old. Um, we require three letters of recommendation. Those letters should um, mostly come from faculty, although if you have professional references, those are okay with, as well, but please make sure to have some academic references as well, even if they're not from architectural uh, uh, faculty. And just make sure to give your uh, recommenders plenty of time to submit their letters as it is still your responsibility to make sure that those uh, letters get submitted on time. And then finally, there is a departmental supplement form, which you'll find in the online application, which is an interactive PDF that you will submit to um, into the online application. As for program specific requirements for our MR MRC applicants, um, we do have prerequisite course requirements. Um, you would need to take a uh, to fulfill the math, you could either take a course in calculus, a course in pre-calculus, or two courses, one in algebra, the second in geometry or trigonometry. 
For physics, we require just one basic Newtonian physics class. Um, motion, heat, light, sound, those kinds of things does not need to have a lab, does not need to be calculus-based. Um, for the basic drawing or design uh, requirement, that could be any sort of basic art drawing class or some sort of basic architectural studio class. And then finally, we require architectural history. Um, that can be one or two courses. It should cover uh, the span of architectural history from antiquity to the present. And then finally, our prerequisite form, which is another PDF where you indicate um, where you've taken this coursework. For our MARC and MSAUD applicants, we do require a portfolio of creative work. Um, that will be a PDF that you will submit and upload to our uh, online application site. We do not have a minimum or maximum number of uh, pages for that, but just to keep in mind that uh, quality over quantity is uh, always your best bet. And then finally, for the MA and PhD applicants, they will be, instead of submitting uh, creative work, they will be submitting examples of written research. So that can be an MA thesis. That could be uh, an academic paper that you've taken for a class in your undergraduate coursework, um, but will need to be part of your submission for the um, for the MA or the PhD uh, application. And finally, um, for all of our graduate programs, our deadline for submitting your application is this coming January 6th. Um, for some of our programs, that deadline change is a change from last year. So please note that the, the slight uh, extra time that you'll have to submit your application and take advantage of it. And um, please don't hesitate if you have any questions about any of these processes to put them in the Q&A section. Um, I'm now going to pass it off to my colleague, uh, Verlena Johnson. Hello, everyone. Good evening. As Jim said, my name is Verlina Johnson. I've been in the department for approximately nine years, which pa uh, pales in comparison to Jim's, I believe, 25 years in the department. Um, I'm going to be discussing a little bit about funding and scholarships with a focus on departmental funding. Jim, next slide, please. So first, I'm going to discuss the recruitment fellowships that were awarded in the 2023-24 academic year. So for this year, for the MARC uh, students, those packages were awarded in one, two, or three-year packages and consist of $28,264 per year. Um, there were also select fellowships for non-resident tuition, uh, those were for one year, and that's roughly $12,245. For MSAUD um, recruitment fellowships, those fellowships range from between $5,000 and $25,000. For PhD students, recruitment fellowships uh, consisted of teaching assistantships um, and two to three year packages. Um, and the compensation for those TA ships were between $32,000 and $36,000. That includes salary as well as fee remissions. And there were also select non-resident tuition uh, fellowships, which uh, consisted of $15,000. Next slide, Jim. Uh, the other um, awards are available for continuing students. Um, who is eligible to apply? This is for MARC master's and PhD students, and it's for after their first year. So the, the first uh, fellowships I spoke about are recruitment fellowships. The ones that I'll be speaking about next are all for continuing um, students. Um, the awards day uh, call will go out to the listservs for the MARC, MA, and PhD students in the spring, and uh, students will submit applications. For MARC students, they will also submit an electronic portfolio of their work. And for MA and PhD students, they will submit a paper sample, a sample of the writing. There were approximately 33 uh, fellowships that were given as part of awards day. And award amounts um, range from between $1,000 and $15,000. Next slide, please. Uh, there are also uh, other awards for continuing students, for MARC stu uh, students specifically, for their second and third year 
And these are also um, sent out as a call to students. They're need-based. Um, and so the call is sent out in the spring quarter and an application is submitted. Um, there were approximately 43 of these awards given this past year and award amounts range from between $1,500 to $10,000. Next slide, please. Um, many of our students will also apply for teaching assistant positions. Um, MARC students and MA PhD students are eligible to apply for these uh, positions. And these are for, for MARC students, therefore their second and third year only, not for incoming MARCs. Um, the applications are due in spring quarter and similarly to the uh, continuing need-based awards and also the award stay, uh, the uh, application will go out in the email to the listservs and then uh, we awarded approximately 35 TA ships and compensation for that 25% uh, um, appointment, which is 10 hours per week, was uh, $4,166 per quarter. And that also includes uh, fee remissions. Next slide, please. Um, there are also a couple of work study uh, programs at the university and MARC and MA and PhD students are eligible to apply uh, for work study positions. Uh, there's a federal work study program and a positions are available within AUD uh, as well as broadly throughout campus. There's also a graduate work study program, which includes internships, research positions, and community service positions, and a supplemental application is required. All of the information that I've discussed uh, in the slide presentation is also on our website. If you go to the admissions section, and for example, were to click on the MR program, you could go all the way to the end of the admissions, and there's a, like a financial aid section, so there'll be more information about all of the things that I've discussed here. Next slide, please. I think that's it. That's it for me. Thank you, Jim. So yeah, once again, just make sure if there's any questions for us and uh, put them in the Q&A and we'll throw it back to, uh, is it Mariana, are you still hosting or is that Travis? Yeah, we have two in the Q&A right now. If you wanna, can you see them, Jim? There's one about uh, prerequisites not being required to apply, but will need to be sure. completed upon attending a program. Sure. So um, that is correct. Um, you don't need to have completed them before you apply, but you will need to complete them before you start the program. Um, and so in the prerequisite sheet that I spoke about, just indicate when and how you're planning to uh, complete them. So it could be spring of 2024 at a particular university and that will just let us know that um, you still intend to do to complete them but that you have not done so yet um so for prerequisite courses it can be any courses that you've taken at any college level whether that's at your undergraduate bachelor's institution whether that's at a community college um, but they should be courses taken um, at the college level not um, high school courses Um, and they can be online courses um, as well. Wonderful, thank you all. Um, I believe we are now moving into some presentations from our student groups, so I am going to pass the mic off to them. Wow. All right. I'm Tyler. And I'm Kat. Let us share screen. <laughs> We're from AIS at UCLA. All right. Uh, so uh, we represent our school's chapter, the American Institute of Architecture Students, AIS, that offers leadership, design, and service opportunities to a network of 6,000 students across 150 plus chapters. The organization is made up of the national sphere with its national perks and programming our West Quad at the regional sphere, and our chapter here at UCLA. Our role within the sphere is to connect students to UC at UCLA to this platform that fosters excellence in architectural education and practice. Throughout the year, we host firm and construction site tours to give you a look behind the scenes of the practice of architecture outside of academia. 
We hold workshops to help students learn essential skills for entering the workforce, like curating your portfolio or resume. And of course, we hold many various events and celebrations throughout the year to meet old friends, meet new friends, and enjoy good food. Follow us on Instagram at AIS at UCLA. We post all of our event announcements, photos, et cetera, on there. So stay tuned. All right. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Jane, second year MRC student and a co-president of NOMAS at UCLA. Hi, I'm Zanara Sandu, and I'm the other co-president uh, of NOMAS at UCLA. So NOMAS is the National Organization of Minority Architecture Students at UCLA. We're a student chapter of NOMA, the National Organization of Minority Architects, a professional organization that has chapters active all over the country. We're dedicated to the pursuit of diversity, equity, and inclusion at AUD. We promote diversity by holding our educational institution to standards of equality and fairness, creating opportunities for community members' personal and professional development, and actively recognizing every facet responsible for the success of our discipline and community. We exist as a source of support for minority students and allies by fostering a communal space of care, open dialogue, and lasting relationships. Created out of a necessary response to change the exclusionary legacy upheld by the design profession, we are an open door to those have, who have been left outside and are committed to the betterment of the design profession. Um, NOMAS at UCLA was founded by Ronald Oziogu and Lauren Mitchell in 2021. Um, being such a young organization, it has given us a unique opportunity to assert opportunities, resources, and events to, flip, to reflect our mission. Um, it is our goal to create an uh, intentional space um, to highlight our students' autonomy. I'm just gonna take you through um, the various events that we have put on in the past uh, year or so um, that kind of reflects um, how we implemented these spaces um, and, and how successful they were. Um, one of the first events we put on was NOMAS at UCLA, UCLA in Dialogue with Jermaine ba Barnes. Jermaine Barnes, if you don't know him, is an educator and architect based out of Miami currently. Um, and this event was incredible. We were able to have a one-on-one -on -one, um, uh, dialogue of a stu students only dialogue with Jermaine. And it was just a really great and intimate opportunity for students to really advocate um, their own voices and participate in a discourse that kind of is analogous, uh, that operates on the side of um, studio. Uh, so that was really exciting and it kind of set the tone for um, what the potentials for events could be. Um, Julia Gambolina, who's a founder and editor of Chisa, Chief of Madame Architect and also a principal at um, Enid Architects, she came in and it was another opportunity to um, this time create more of a creative space and provide a writing workshop for um, UCLA students. So again, like creating an opportunity on this side of the spectrum of more like career opportunities and how we can diversify um, the skills we build in architecture school, where it's not just that you can be a uh, um, a professional in the design world, but you can take that um, into other disciplines like being a writer. Um, so that was really great. And also it was another place where um, we got to talk about um, gender and class and um, other political discourses that um, sometimes are missing um, from our day to day. Um, Another very exciting event that we uh, put on was a panel um, that consisted of the topic equity as aesthetics, community and capital featuring our chair, Mar Mariana Ibanez, um, uh, SciArc professor and architect Natu Fall and architect Kevin Sherrod, um, where NOMAS uh, moderated a panel discussing 
how aesthetics community and capital um, are integrated with equity in our discipline. So how in each one of those disciplines that architecture operates in, are we allowing uh, the opportunity for equity and what does equity look like as we progress um, in the discipline? Um, and th this was also a really great and open conversation that allowed um, more nuanced discussions of uh, race and in the professional practice, um, in a theoretical practice and also like trying to reorient us in a community space. Um, so we also made an effort to highlight, you know, the different cultures and backgrounds of all of our ACE, uh, UCLA AUD students um, and, you know, make the events a little more lighthearted and opportunities just to hang out and relax. So this was one, the Lunar New Year celebration. Um, oftentimes we like, you know, sometimes we do like potlucks or um, we're able to like finesse some food opportunities if you want like, a good free meal once in a while. Um, so for Black History Month last year, we uh, got to invite Ronald Oziogu, who I mentioned was one of the co-founders of NOMAS, and Lance Collins, who is a UCLA alum. This was really a special, also intimate affair between two alumni, um, alumnuses that would converse in a career-oriented way to our students to see how we can um, progress through the field post-grad and not just, you know, be thrown out um, into the world. So again, really great. And then finally, um, this is, we do pencils down every term. This is an, a, a really exciting thing we do and one that I think is for me most special. Um, we basically create a feast for our students during finals week and it, it just really is like the heart of what our mission is to um, provide a comforting and safe space at NOMAS. So we hope that um, you want to join us. We have general membership and then we also have um, executive board um, positions as well. And yeah, we just want to like create a supportive environment for our UCLA students. In addition to our events, um, this year was the first time that we participated in an annual NOMA student design competition. And with that, had the opportunity to travel to the annual NOMA conference in Portland, Oregon a couple of weeks ago. Um, this is a really great space to apply our like ideas um, in design to a specific brief that was related to the Black community in Portland um, and to kind of have those conversations outside of a studio and classroom setting. Um, the conference itself was also a great experience to, to meet fellow students and professionals and to hear some of the sessions at the conference talking again about like these broader conversations about what's happening in architecture, in um, education and in practice in order to support minority architects. So this is something that we hope will continue forward into future years. And please follow us on Instagram and here's our email if you have any questions or want to get in touch and we hope you'll jo join us here at AUD. Thanks. Thank you. My name is Katie. Um, so we are the Talk and Text Film Club. Oh, this is Melody. <laughs> yeah. And we're we're a few admin um, led by faculty advisor um, Yara Fagali for a student club called Talk and Text. Um, so we have screen films with an adjacency to architecture, and we explore a different theme each quarter. We're all, we're all familiar with the PSA, please don't talk or text during the film. Um, at Talk and Text, we invert that rule. We invite you to do the opposite. We screen films both in person and via Zoom, where the sidebar chat is a forum to talk, critique, and reflect during the film, as well as a real life document of our collective reaction.
Um, after screenings, we keep the chat component as an archive of our responses and discussions and to work towards a physical manifestation of the conversation. Um, so this is some of our programming from last year. We strive to screen films with a huge variety of directors, subject matter, um, directors or uh, actors with, from many different nations, and always with plenty of guest curators, often even AUB faculty. Um, and coming up, we have some exciting um, guests from outside UCLA, which is awesome. So this quarter, our theme is reflections. And I'll read you our theme description to give you some more context. Um, from the earliest ruminations in Plato's cave, humans have questioned the definitive spirit based on projective phenomena. We perceive quite literally through reflections, framings, and surfaces. The world of film is yet another device. Peter Mirror physically reflects the interior conditions of characters and the internal world they build. So we really see reflections as offering us multitudes of filmic architecture through cinematography um, or other techniques that build for them, refraction and reconfiguration along the way. Uh, so we had a few screenings already. We have one more and this is something we love to build on and really build community around. Um, thank you. Thank you. Oh yeah, feel free to follow us on Instagram. Um, and DM us anytime. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we are now going to move into the portfolio workshop, uh, which is the uh, final portion of our. Um, yes, uh, yes, very briefly. Thank you. Uh, um, pool, can can pool for that? Okay, sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, we are cool. Uh, my name is Kinami. I'm a third year at Mark, at, um, and I'm a managing editor at Paul. And my name is Kay, and I'm a second year Master of Architecture student, um, and I'm also a managing editor of Pool. Uh, so Pool is a nonprofit graduate student-led publication dedicated to providing an outlet for creative work that traditionally falls outside of the scope, uh, scope of academic architectural institutions. Uh, Pool, though still a relatively young publication, is proud to be the arbiters of an eight-year legacy, and we're thrilled to continue pushing forward as we prepare for a ninth annual print issue. Pool is a project about communication. Playfulness is our tone, and the voice each issue takes on is a reflection of the editor's contemporary thoughts, feelings, and observations, informing our future directions. Named after a prominent regional yard feature that has a particular ubiquity in the collective image of Los Angeles, we champion working within a hyperlocal context. Insofar, the moniker Pool acts also as a nod to UCLA alumnus Leonard Corrin's thesis project, WET, a publication that roller skated its way into the hands of readers from the 70s through 80s. Uh, as the editorial staff, we believe our responsibility is to constantly wrestle with balancing the magazine's aspirations of an experimental ethos with critical concern for contemporary urban issues and community engagement. Uh, working through these multiple interests presents con uh, consistent challenges, but also opens thrilling potential for the magazine's evolution as the field of architecture makes room for voices that have not previously been given space. The most recent issue, Residue, included photo essays, poems, drawings, and interviews. We sustain momentum via imagining the possibilities of format which can widen the scope of what and for whom is included into the frenetic definitions of architectural work and cultural production. Ultimately, legibility and consumability have become our primary critical project, expressed through an experimentation of format, including printed matter, communicate, community engagement, and digital media. Since issue three, we have also introduced something we call Poolside, a space for loose material and object exploration that is offered as a complementary accessory to the magazine. Uh, Pool aims to visually, visually engage with our surrounding environment, and we prior, prioritize hosting events that collaborate with the student body at AUV and beyond. Last year, we held a number of events, including liquidation, an auction style after studio party that highlighted the AED community talents. It is our hope to keep bringing in new and exciting events in line with our upcoming issue theme. 
to be revealed soon. Uh, we approach this new term with a running start to output a call for submissions and work throughout the year to re realize a magazine which embodies a range of characters, mediums, and formats. In order to anchor Pool and its mission, we need fresh minds to jump in. If you're interested, we hope that you will join us when you decide to attend BCLA. You can follow us on Instagram and visit our website to learn more about the magazine and explore additional digital content. We are really looking forward to an exciting year and thank you for your attention. Thank you, everybody. Um, without further ado, please do find in the chat the links to the portfolio workshop, which is just beginning now, and I will see you there. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, and good night, good afternoon. <laughs>